Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is the man who started it all, makes it all happen. It has become part of our national calendar every Labor Day weekend for 27 years. A mix of showbiz glitz and heart-wrenching stories of battling disease. And each year, Jerry Lewis kids, cajoles, and pleads with his audience to pledge one dollar more than the year before. Now I am really excited. Oh, dear God, yes! Over the years, Lewis has helped raise more than one billion dollars to fight muscular dystrophy and other diseases. The 66-year-old comedian says it's become his life's work, that as soon as one year's telethon is over, he starts producing the next one. I got to deliver Debbie Reynolds live. In the from, first hour. In the first hour, from Branson, Missouri. Lewis is clinical about the telethon. Where to put the star, where to put the corporate sponsors, where to put news of the latest medical breakthrough. Honestly, as a showman, do you also have to tug at people's heartstrings? Absolutely. You must tug at their heartstrings. If you don't tug at their heartstrings, then you're on the air for nothing. We're not a variety program. I have to let the people know that this child that I'm introducing them to had a life expectancy of maybe eight or nine months 25 years ago. Today, he has a life expectancy of 15 or 18 years. You make no apology for the fact that you want to get people emotionally involved in the plight of these children I make no apology, I'm spitting my gut out. I'm coming from my gut. And this is in the amount of another million dollars. But now a growing number of disabled Americans say that all the millions Jerry Lewis raises from his gut come at too high a cost. They say Lewis succeeds by portraying them as objects of pity, reinforcing stereotypes of the disabled as helpless and childlike. I think that he is the personification of what we call the disability bigot, which is the guy who thinks that we are something other than human. Mike Irvin and his sister, Chris Matthews, both have muscular dystrophy. They are former poster children, Jerry's kids. But they've now formed something called Jerry's Orphans to protest the telethon's message. The group claims to have more than 3,000 members, including more and more former poster children, like Laura Hershey of Denver. I was being asked to, I mean, in, in subtle ways, I was being asked to evoke pity. And Ben Matlin of Los Angeles. All MDA seems to do is uh, parade us across the stage as, as a, a worst case scenario, a fate worse than death. In our interview, Lewis confronted Jerry's orphans in detail for the first time. They've got a problem. I hope that they get better. Well, how can you say that? I mean, they, how can I say it? Listen they, again. They have a problem. I hope they get better. But these people have this disease, and they say you're making them feel childlike. I feel terrible about that. It's a shame. But while I'm playing to 100 million people that think what I'm doing is OK, I can't worry about or dignify 20, 30 people. I can't. I haven't got the time for that. Stop the pity. Stop the lie. In fact, Jerry's Orphans organized protests last year outside stations carrying the telephone, and turnout was small. Efforts to get corporate sponsors to drop out have so far failed. Dr. Arnold Gale, a neurologist with muscular dystrophy, says Lewis's critics have it wrong. The voices that produce that criticism are often the voices of people who are in their own lives unhappy, unsettled, and who have not come to grips with their own disabilities. But the protesters do have some high-powered supporters. He paints as uh, having one foot in the grave, another on a banana peel. Evan Kemp is chairman of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Right, how are you? Kemp, who has muscular dystrophy, says Lewis's emotional message creates real, practical problems for the disabled. My kids cannot go in the workplace. There's nothing they can do. They've been attacked by a vicious killer. I'm begging for their survival. What damage does Jerry Lewis do with his telephone? I think uh, pity and employment opportunity are incompatible. That you can't pity somebody and want to hire that person. You can't pity somebody and want that person integrated into society. Kemp's criticism over the years has drawn an angry response. Last February, Lewis wrote to the White House demanding that Kemp be silenced and threatening to go before 90 million viewers to defend the Muscular Dystrophy Association if Kemp persisted. 
Then White House Chief of Staff Sam Skinner told Kemp to stop talking, stressing the importance of putting this matter to rest. It's a measure of how strongly he feels that today Kemp defied those orders. Could you get fired for talking to us? I could. And why are you doing it? Well, I think it's very important. And I don't think that as chairman of the EEOC that I can keep quiet. Call your pledge in for my kids and my teenage kids and my older kids. One of the things that sets off Lewis's critics is all his talk about Jerry's kids, which they say portrays people who have muscular dystrophy and related diseases as childlike, when the vast majority live long lives. We are adults, and we have to be accepted as adults in this world. There are too many people who go around thinking that disability somehow stunts you emotionally and intellectually. And that is the biggest problem that we run into. It's not our muscular dystrophy. It's not the fact that we can't walk. It's that attitude. I am proud to be a Jerry's kid. Airline executive Barry Goldberg was stricken with Lou Gehrig's disease three years ago at age 43. He says the point about Jerry's kids is not to make them children, but to create a sense of family with Lewis at the head. There's just something special about him. I mean, he wants to help save lives. And if I could applaud and I could stand up, I would give Jerry Lewis a standing ovation that would last for a year. Lewis says he's inspired lots of people. He told us about Adam Marino, who in last year's telethon at age 10, asked Lewis to come bowl with him. And I promise you, I'll fly to Chicago and we'll knock down some pins. OK? Yeah. OK. A month later, Lewis kept his promise and says Adam beat him by 10 pins. I'd like you to know, my friend, that he's still alive one year since that date. And the mother and the father say, you came to bowl with him, and he's going to stay alive for you. Lewis compares it to the famous story about Babe Ruth hitting a home run for a sick boy that kept him alive. He did it! It's a home run! And you know what did it for him? Hero worship. That child survived by hero worship. Babe Ruth made him walk, okay? Oh my God, are you kidding? He actually said that? The arrogance of him to assume that he's a hero to those of us in our condition, the very idea that he would assume that we needed a hero, B, that he would be the hero that we would choose, it's just beyond my comprehension. Every year, Parade Magazine asks Lewis to write a cover story about the telethon. Two years ago, his article was called, If I Had Muscular Dystrophy. And it was the final straw that led to the formation of Jerry's Orphan. Lewis wrote about cripples and said if he had MD, he'd have to learn how to be half a person. You've called them half a person. You've talked about the indignity of being carried. You've talked about the steel imprisonment. I wrote that in a piece, Of yes. the wheelchair. Right. All of that. You right. Wrote. Is that the way you really feel about it? They can't run with me down the hall, can they? In truth, aren't they given half? Haven't they been left with half? If there's a degree of measurement, are they whole? A half a person. Can you believe that? Because you have a disability, you automatically have relinquished half of your humanity. I don't even know the word to describe what that does. It, it hurts me. It physically hurts me. Telling it to you now, it's, I'm sorry, but my first, my first reaction is tears because it's taken away my self-esteem. As the dispute goes on, it takes on more and more the tone of a fight within a family, a fight between a father and the children who have rejected him. Here you are, you've devoted most of your life right. to this. Now here you have former poster children, mm -hmm. kids that you, that you hugged. That were sending to college. And they are now turning on you and calling themselves Jerry's orphans. Forget the issue, personal. What does that do to you? Why didn't they call us anything when we bought them the wheelchairs, Chris? Why wasn't I a terrible man when we bought them the wheelchairs that are getting them around? Don't you know that all of the people that have nothing to do with them are appalled by what they're doing? It's, again, the paternalistic thing. It's, you know, if you're good to dad and you cuddle up and kiss dad, then you'll get all kinds of rewards. 
But if you stand up to your father, he's going to cut you off and tell you you're an ingrate. Does Jerry Lewis have to go? He probably does. Uh, Jerry's orphan, Mike Irwin, Chris Matthews, uh, all the others want him to leave. And I think he's going to have to leave. When you walk through a storm, keep your head up high. The critics acknowledge all that Lewis has done, the billion dollars he's raised, the fact that he brought muscular dystrophy to the nation's attention. But at a time when disabled activists want to speak for themselves, they say this kind of charity costs them too much. Lewis's response, he's not going anywhere. Does it ever cross your mind for a moment that perhaps these people who have the disease are right and you're wrong, that you're making a mistake? No, never, never, never. I am so right because my heart and my gut steers me. And you'll never, no, you'll never. I'm one of the luckiest men alive. I do very good work. No one can tell me differently. Thank you. Good night. God bless you.